I'm going to be ranking every DCEU movie up to this date with the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League. 10 movies on this list. It's actually easy because some of the DCEU movies can be hit or miss. Most of them aren't, but there's definitely some misses here and there. But let's get on with the list. Number 10 will be the... The Suicide Squad. Surprisingly okay on rewatch. Like, I thought I would hate it because I remember hating it, watching it for the first time ever. And upon rewatching, it's actually not that bad. Like, I don't know if just the hype got it. Everything was garbage and I just aligned with it. But the movie is not that bad. It's clearly the worst of the DCEU. The way it's made, it's not horribly made, decently made. Everything else just kind of sucks. The characters suck aside from Deadshot and Harley Quinn. Everyone gets no development whatsoever. Red flag or whatever. Okay, whatever. The villains suck. Twin, Chantress. The, everything around it is kind of dumb. And the first 20 minutes or so feels like a music video over a movie and it's like okay what is all this crap as a movie it's not horribly made not a horrible film number nine is is Justice League 2017 or Justice League. It's a messy film. You got Whedon in it, Snyder in it, but he had to leave. And it's through the meddling with the whole CG Superman mustache, different look for Stephen Wolf, which looks like a PS3 auto from PS3. All the reshoots and everything. The final bottle looks very orange. Why is it orange? Like why? Character development and character moments are clearly cut because they wanted a two hour runtime when this film was originally supposed to be, I don't know, like three or four hours long. Characters like Flash and Cyborg, they get sidelined. Even Stephen Wolf, watching the Snyder cause Stephen Wolf development gets cut off as well. He just seems like generic bad guy that's selling these boxes for mother or father and all that stuff is just super messy i'm more shocked that it wasn't completely garbage that like the vfx were awful or like i don't know like some people might consider it the worst i don't think so okay maybe it is a horribly made movie but like in terms of the story somehow the studio got this film out on time big old gaps of not nailing it in but the movie was still stitched together in a way that was cohesive in a way it's still a messy jumbo mess number eight is bad <laughs> Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice. I think the worst thing about him is Lex Luthor and his plan. Like everything else leading up was actually pretty decent in the Ultimate Cut and both versions. The Ultimate Cut has more of Superman going to like Gotham and thing and investigating on Batman. People have issues with Batman killing. I mean, keep these people to death, almost to death. Come on, just kill them, Batman. But leading up with them hating each other, Batman or Bruce Wayne hating the Superman because him and Zod fought and recreated like 9 11 in a way. And then Superman not liking the fact that Batman does kill. It creates this conflict where each time they meet, kind of know each other face to face every once in a while. And then when it comes to the fight okay this is awesome into a martha it's like save martha it's like what the heck and so everything works up until lex's plans because he wants to pit batman against superman reasons that i still honestly i kind of don't care about and then jesse eisenberg portrayal i don't know if this is like Snyder's fault or the actor himself but it's i don't know too twitchy too comical in a way like there's moments where i laugh and i'm saying you know like i don't know about this i think i get this so it's kind of a disappointment and then wonder woman showing up without her own movie too much stuff in this movie number seven is wonder is Wonder Woman 1984. Now, I did not want to put this movie this low, but it is a huge disappointment after thinking about it. The movie's okay. Coming into this one, having Diana not get over a 70 or 80 decade long relationship over a guy, Steve Trevor. Granted, everybody grieves differently. 70, 80 plus years, you gotta get over this guy, Diana. What the hell are you thinking? And so when she wishes him back, like this whole driven by this wish stone thing, this MacGuffin, and that was the first moment where I'm like, no, do not go this way, do not go this route. And it does. Cheetah is like a trope now, where she's like the, I don't want to say ugly, but she's I don't know, no one acknowledges her up until she's like beautiful. It's like that troll, only really like that troll. Maxwell Lord, yeah, his whole thing, his commercial line thing. While funny at first, it got pretty annoying. Trying to save the world and then him, Nanji, and stuff. Like, I don't know, man. Stuff like there's two villains, one human do some behind the scenes stuff, and the one that could face off against Wonder Woman, and you mess up on both. That's, I don't know, pretty bad. And also, the way Deep Trevor comes back, I don't know why they did it like this, but they had him come back, having Diana wish her with her in her head, and then having him possess some other guy, but they should have created him out of nothing. Why did they go that route? Route. And the film also wants audiences to accept way much for the ending, having everyone not wish their wish, not everyone's gonna follow that. So it's like, yeah, I don't think everyone's down for that. So yeah, Wonder Woman 1984 was pretty big disappointment. Number six is the. The Snyder Cut or Zack Snyder's Justice League. Just saw this film and it's good. It's a huge improvement on the original film or not original theatrical release. More development and more scene, more fleshed out with Cyborg, Flash, and even Stephen Wolf doing it proof his worth to Dark Side. That is at least something, right? It doesn't make him the best villain of all time, but it is something because in the first one he just feels like a generic PS3 bad guy. This one is like okay, he has something to do. He's doing it. He's aggressive. He's menacing. The new design looks cool, I guess, better than the 2017 version. There's no CG lip Superman. Jesus Christ, thank God. 
Grant uses scenes of like Lois Lane and Martha Kent way too much slow mo moments. Zack Snyder loves the slow mo shit, but I could point out three scenes right now Lois Lane walking with the umbrella in the rain. That was a slow mo for absolutely no reason. Aquaman walking, getting his shirt off, slow mo for no reason. And the Flash saving Iris. He could have just saved her in no more time, but then he had to like slow mo it, which looked cool, but it's like, listen, you're just, you know, extending the runtime to four hours. You don't need to slow mo everything. And that's also another issue. Asking people to watch a four hour movie is a lot of ass, and you could definitely feel some parts where it's like, god damn, can we move forward? this please but the Snyder Cut is essentially a longer more completed and better version of the theatrical release number five is <laughs> It's Birds of Prey and that long ass title that I'm not gonna try to remember. Fun film. There's a lot of, I guess, issues people had because of the marketing, but the marketing never portrayed anything like it did in the movie itself. The movie basically should have been called Harley Quinn because Birds of Prey, I don't see it at all. Andrew King's in it, Hundreds is in it, Black Canary, but they're kind of barely in the movie. This movie is from the perspective of mostly Harley Quinn and her narrating the whole story and especially her egg sandwich, which why. Egg. Bacon. Yes. American cheese. Which, which by the way is a fantastic scene. Also an issue. All I remember is the egg sandwich scene. Because one, I'm kind of hungry right now. And two, it was just, I don't know, it was a lot of fun. Seeing her egg sandwich and not getting people to mess with it. Like, that was a lot of fun. Black Mask, he's okay as a villain. And then like the other characters, like I do like Cassandra Kane and Huntress and every cast member on here. But it's just, this film doesn't have enough time to like develop anything on those characters. Aside from Harley Quinn. She's already been established. And on the flip side, this film colorful. When she shoots one of those like guns that aren't actual guns. But then it pops out color. Very colorful scene when she destroys the ace chemicals they let go of joker mr j that was a very colorful scene so movie but does pop out at you it's a lot of fun but it don't expect anything big to happen it's just like a fun movie number four is <laughs> Wonder Woman 2017, the first one. You know, a good film. You have Diana, First World War, bring out her bubble. She's been in the miscreant for so long that she wants to go out, do some different things. The mom is worried that she's a meet Ares because Ares wants to find all the Amazons and destroy them. Then Zeus protected them from Ares and she has to go find that out. But her relationship with Steve Trevor, her fish out of the water when she gets to the whole town or whatever, that was a lot of fun. And there's quite a bit of really good action sequences. Her busting through windows, that field scene. Not that last scene with Ares though, with Ares saying a bunch of video game lines that makes no goddamn sense but like there's a lot of notable sequences unlike 1984 so i don't know what happened and it has a really good first and second act the third act with the airy stuff pretty much sucks you know goes down in from there which is why upon rewatching it just kind of dips down and i do notice more of calco dolphins definitely some lines that are said of being like i don't know if that was a good line or a good way to say that line but i'll give it a pass right now so and steve trevor's ultimate sacrifice was needed in order to you know prevent more wars and whatnot so that was a very emotional scene for diana that worked well number three is man Man of Steel, probably the most divisive movie on this list because some people love it, some people hate it, some people are in the middle. I'm right in the middle where this is a pretty good film. This is a pretty good non-experienced Superman slash Kent was shielded from using his powers because his father told him they had hiding secrets or else people would want to, you know, go to the farm and get his, you know, secrets and whatnot. And so when he flies for the first time, it is an amazing scene. Him getting to use his powers, him fighting for the first time, even though being on Earth, he is very powerful. He's way powerful than Zod's army. Zod's army, they were created and built to be in war. So they can fight way better than him. There are some moments where it's like, eh, okay, this is clear CG, but I'll give it a pass because it still looks cool. The whole punching stuff. This film actually makes you understand why Zod is doing the things he's doing. He's not a bad villain for the sake of being a bad villain or whatever. Jonathan Kent should have survived that tornado thing, but he didn't because, I don't know, dumb reasons. That's one of the dumbest things. And him killing Zod. <laughs> Have an issue with it. Zod forced them because he would either kill that family, and since he's not experienced, he could just flew up. Honestly, thinking about it, he'd just been like Zod and flew up. But he's not experienced. He doesn't know how to think well on his feet. So the only way he could finish this is snapping his neck and killing Zod. He's on his knees, saying no. He's not really able to, you know, forgive himself. Kind of after this moment, and the theme is amazing. Anytime I hear it, when I heard it in the Snyder cut, it just put me right back to Man of Steel. Number two is Aqu Aquaman. I was not expecting to like this film as much as I did. Big main reason why it's at number two. It's just a lot of fun. Jason Momoa is a lot of fun. Him interacting with Amber Heard. Everybody in Atlantis. Everybody on Earth and the sea. He's just a lot of fun. It has this fun tone. Setting up a set piece and then executing it really well. Anytime they go in Atlantis, it looks colorful as hell. The blue pops out. All the weird sea creatures. They look awesome. There's a one notable sequence that reminded me of Uncharted where it's like that one bell shot. From 
shop for Manta, Black Manta, who is kind of useless in the scene, just there to get his revenge on Aquaman. But the whole like Amber Heard running on a rooftop thing, most superhero films, it's got weak villains. Like Black Manta, he's alright, and his brother, not really a villain. He just wants the throne of Atlantis. And again, like with Aquaman, he's reluctant to do anything. All he wants to do is just have some fun. This is what this movie is. But keeps getting you know real back to the King of Atlantis, you know, the aftermath of the whole Justice League events. And these people just keep wanting him to go underground or underwater, be a king. He does. He has his whole suit and everything. Aquaman is a lot of fun. Number one is shut in. Shazam movie again the Aquaman it's a lot of fun it's clearly the best and what the DCEU should be in terms of tone tone with the mother leaving her own son that was pretty dark even rewatching I was like damn pretty fucking dark there huh but Zachary Levi as Shazam was awesome playing like a kid in a big superhero bodysuit the villain like of every comic book movie fucking sucks and having all his adopted brother and sisters having powers near the end all of them singing Shazam changing their forms being like hey we all look good but don't know what the hell we're doing and then having to you know be together and speaking on the kids like the, all the kids maybe okay maybe not all of them but most of them are a lot of fun to just watch. Because anytime you get kids involved, they have bad acting or weird just things in movies. But the actors they got, they're a lot of fun. This film is more of a comedy as well. It will make you laugh mostly throughout. Semi darker tones here and there. But it's basically a comedy. So that is my rating for every DCEU film. Currently, there's only 10. There's bound to be more. Or maybe this universe won't even exist because DC and Warner Brothers want to do standalone stuff. Who knows? But that's it for me. This has been the world so far. Thank you for watching.